As bodybuilders or weightlifters, we love to see our training numbers go up. Whether we're adding more weight to the bar or simply performing more reps on a given lift, the goal is always progression. A new personal best followed by a mini celebration is no different than a soccer player scoring a goal and doing a dance. It's one of the highlights of our training. But what happens when all the numbers stall for weeks or even months at a time? Is it because you've reached your genetic ceiling and can no longer make progress? Or is there something you can adjust to have the numbers trend upward again? This video will cover five ways to smash through bench press plateaus using simple yet scientifically proven strategies that will ensure you're maximizing your strength potential. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Number one, stop maxing out. A common reason many lifters hit plateaus is they constantly attempt their max with the hopes of setting a new personal best every week. While this may work in the earlier stages of training or for some lifters following a low volume training program, many will hit a wall and need to take a different approach. Essentially, they'll need to follow a more suitable progression scheme. A progression scheme is a structure or pattern that a lifter can follow to progress their lifts. For example, the progress scheme used when trying to hit a PR every session is known as single progress. This progression scheme focuses on increasing the weight on the bar each time you bench, even if it's only by five pounds while hitting a similar amount of repetitions. Here's an example. Week one, 205 pounds for eight reps. Week two, 210 pounds for eight reps. Week three, 215 pounds for eight reps. Single progression is excellent for novices or lifters who are far from their strength, ceiling, or genetic potential. It's also a fast way to find your max since you continuously add weight and approach your limit. The problem is once you've reached your current max, adding weight to the barbell at this rate is impractical. This is the point where it can feel like you're plateaued. But here's the thing, this is not your fault because single progression has its limitations. Here's why. If you added five pounds to your bench press every week for one year, that would be a 260 pound increase in your bench press in just 12 months. But for the most part, there aren't many people who can increase their bench at this rate. So once you've made as much progress as you can using single progression, it's time to move on to other progression schemes. Double progression is where you stick with the same weight until you can hit the top end of a rep range on all sets. While adding reps can also be a challenge, this scheme takes the pressure off of adding more weight to the bar in the short term. Here's how it works. Let's say your program prescribes three sets of eight to 12 reps. If you can do 185 pounds for three sets of eight, you would stick with that load until you can do 12 reps on all sets. Double progression gives you more time to adapt to a load before adding more weight to the bar. Hitting the top end of a rep range may take you several weeks, if not months, but be patient. When it's time to move up, your body will be ready for it. Lastly, we have linear periodization. This is where you increase the weight each session while reducing the reps. You would then repeat the cycle from a heavier starting weight. Here's how it might look. Session one, 185 pounds for eight reps. Session two, 195 pounds for six reps. Session three, 205 pounds for four reps. The first cycle is complete. After that, you can either deload or repeat the sequence starting with a heavier load. Linear periodization is fun because it allows you to train with different loads rather than sticking with the same weight for weeks at a time. Feel free to use the progression scheme that brings you the most progress. You may also notice different progression schemes work better for various lifts. Number two, deload more often. A deload is a period that allows your body to reduce fatigue and realize its new fitness level. As you consistently train, you make gains, but you also generate fatigue that masks your new level of performance. You can implement a deload by adding one week of reduced training volume and intensity to your training program every four to six weeks. Here's how it's done. Number one, reduce the load on all lifts by 10 to 15%. Number two, do one less set than you usually do. Number three, do the low end of the rep range on all sets. Keep in mind this deload isn't a whole week off lounging at the beach. You're still lifting and practicing the movements, but you're just not lifting as heavy or as hard as you typically do. This short period of less volume will help you maintain your gains while giving your body time to recover and come back stronger. This mini break may be what you need to break your plateau. Number three, adjust your weekly working sets. Different lifters respond differently to low, moderate, and high training volumes. Each of us has a range of how many weekly working sets produce the best results. Here are some general guidelines for working sets per week per muscle group to experiment with. A good starting point for most lifters would be 10 to 12 sets per week. From there, you can move up to 12 to 15 sets per week, and over time, you may eventually get to a point where you'll need upwards of 20 sets per week to see progress. As long as you're not doing more weekly sets than you can recover from, you're on the right track. If, however, you're performing more sets than your body can handle, it will become nearly impossible to recover and progress. In other words, more is not always better. If this is the case, scaling back the number of sets you're performing can help you progress faster. Number four, try different training frequency. 
Training frequency refers to the number of times you train a muscle group each week. For example, most people perform a chest pressing movement once, maybe twice per week. You see, strength is a skill, and the more you can practice a specific lift, the more efficient you become at that lift, thus making it much easier to progress. Experimenting with a higher frequency by adding an additional chest pressing session can be the change needed to break a bench press plateau. Not only will this allow you to train the lift more often, but you'll be much fresher since you'll be able to rest between sessions. For example, instead of cramming 12 sets into one workout, where half the sets will be done in a fatigue state, you try four sets three times per week and be primed and excited for each session. Number five, the recovery outside of the gym. We spend most of our time outside of the gym. As a result, factors like sleep quality and nutrition play a vital role in recovery and gym performance. Sleep is the most powerful recovery tool that we have. This 2018 systematic review that included 17 studies found consecutive nights of sleep restriction reduced forced output of multi-joint movements. If getting adequate sleep during the night isn't possible, then including a 30-minute power nap throughout the day has been shown to positively impact weightlifting performance and exercises like the bench press. When it comes to nutrition, consuming enough total calories and sufficient amounts of daily protein will benefit your lifting progress in both the short and long term. It's also essential to consume nutritious whole foods that support health and overall energy. In the short term, experienced lifters are likely to experience a decline in their weight training when lowering calories to reduce body fat. This is because weight training requires energy, and the lifting performance is best when consuming enough calories to maintain our current body weight, or in a slight calorie surplus. Calorie restriction typically involves carbohydrate restriction, which can lead to lower levels of glycogen. When dieting, depleted glycogen levels are something to be aware of when breaking plateaus on your bench press since it can hamper your performance. Two good nutrition targets are consuming at least 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight per day and eating at least maintenance calories when trying to hit a number on your lifts. If you implement the strategies discussed in this video, you will break bench press plateaus in no time. Remember, training is a lifelong journey and the more you advance, the more focused effort it'll take to progress. But when you hit those new personal bests and celebrate, it's always worth it. Did you find this video helpful? Give the video a like because it'll help out the channel. Also, if you're looking to take your workouts to the next level, grab a bottle of my science-based pre-workout supplement, Turbocharged. Packed with scientifically proven ingredients, all clinically dosed, you'll experience all the performance benefits without the jitters or crash. If you want to learn more, head over to musclemonsters.com supplements or click the link in the description. And if you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button so you don't miss the next video. Peace.